Hello everyone and welcome to Handmade Hero Show, we code a complete game live on stream. Uh, we did last weekend some diagram collection code, which basically uh, was designed to allow us to output diagrams for debugging purposes. It's not ever meant to be something that uh, happens in the release version of the game. It's just for debugging purposes. And so we put uh, some, some collection code that allows pieces of our code that we want to uh, see visually, like see augmented information for to dump those diagrams to a buffer. <clears throat> and what we need to do today is take that buffer and display it on the screen. Uh, which, you know, is not super hard, but uh, remember we sort of have a very limited rendering engine. Uh, in Handmade Hero, it just only does a very uh, small amount of things. It, it can basically do, you know, just the stuff that we expected to have in the game. And so we may have to do more work, you know, it may be a more complicated job than it would be if you had built a very complicated renderer that did lots of things. Uh, so in order to do this, we'll have to see, uh, you know, specifically where we're at. Oops, that's the wrong directory. All right. Uh, I don't actually remember where, where we're supposed to load this. Uh, that looks like the right place. Okay, uh, so if we go in and, and take a look, you know, the, the code's compiling and stuff, but it's not actually doing the drawing, right? So in theory, if handmade diagrams is turned on, which right now we have forced it to be, uh, normally, you know, we might turn it off, or we might do something like, oh, you know, it's, it's only on if we set handmade internal, right, to be one, something like that. Uh, I mean, I guess another way we could do it is, like, if uh, not defined, you know, handmade diagrams, uh, then handmade diagrams is handmade internal. So basically on internal builds, they're on by default, you know, that kind of thing. So assuming it's not turned off, what we do now is we create a, this, there's this thing called diagram group, right? And what it does is it just, like, takes, and it fills up a buffer filled with, uh, Diagram instructions. And these are what the instructions look like. It's called diagram entry. Uh, and what we need to do now, if we want to see these on the screen, is make some way of actually drawing them. And we added a thing that was basically like a filter, because the code that you know we actually are going to want to diagram can sometimes get run, you know, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, depending on what we're trying to diagram. It may be code that runs way too often per frame. And not only would we have a storage issue if we did enough of them, uh, but we would also face this problem of the screen would just be like filled with crap uh, that we don't want. So in addition to just being able to record diagrams, we also added the ability to filter what you were seeing so that only diagrams that you actually want will be drawn. And so what I thought we would do there is it turned out, uh, let me launch Remedy here. Uh, let me also spell Remedy correctly. Uh, so if we go ahead and run Handmade Hero as it stands, uh, what you can see is there's like these, you know, there's these things I can access with the F keys. I'm hitting the F keys right now. That are like little debug overlays. These are very common in games. You see them in basically every game. There's, you know, stuff like this. And if we look, we had on F9, like, I don't remember exactly when we made this, uh, but we made a thing that was like a time step modifier in here. And so what you can see is, like, I can turn the time step way down on the game for looking like at things like the... Um, you can see, like, I can even turn it to something where it doesn't get any times at all. But this way we can see, like, very slow stuff, right? We did that um, as something that we uh, implemented a long time ago so we can see, you know, stuff happening in the collision detector. You can see it happening here. Uh, right stuff with the glove and all that. Um, and so if we just assume, like, okay, we've got this little... Uh, we've got this little... I don't even know what you call this. Uh, panel. We've got this little panel. Uh, what we could do is just say, instead of collision recorder, which doesn't really make any sense because we didn't actually implement a collision recorder, we just kind of said maybe we should. Uh, instead, what we could do is just make this like the diagram panel. So F9, which is what this was, 
is like the diagram panel and it can step through any diagrams, right? So we don't need it to step through just di uh, collision. I guess we can make it so it can step through any diagram. And that way we can go through here and do something where we basically like record or something what's happening on a frame. Uh, and then, you know, I don't know how we'll capture it exactly. Uh, maybe we could use the loop live code editing, which I think still exists. I don't know if it does or not. Let me see. Yeah. So we still have looped live code editing and all that stuff. So we can do stuff like this where we then, um, uh, well, yeah. The problem is that just re-records all of memory. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we could try to opt out our diagram system from it, but that sounds complicated. So I don't know, maybe loop live code editing won't help us here because uh, it's really, it's for specifically that, which is, you know, editing code while you loop something in the game. Um, so I don't know if that would really help us. I honestly can't quite see how it would. Um, but, you know, at some point we need to figure out a way where we would figure out what diagram to use. Now we have picking, right? Because, you know, if you remember um, like this system where we would uh, pick stuff on the screen, right? We can uh, pick various pieces of, I don't know, stuff. Like, you can see me picking it here, uh, right? Like, sprites and stuff. When we have access to that, we should be able to do things like pick the hero and have it know which sprite that was and record diagrams for that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so we should be able to do a thing where we just go, like, okay, use that same picking system, uh, pick a particular, you know, something here, and have it show the diagrams, like filter the diagrams just to that uh, entity or whatever we picked, right? So I feel like what we could do, hopefully, is is do that pick. And I don't know, does the pick include the glove? I'm not sure if it does or doesn't, but I think it does. So, you know, if we are, to, if we, the glove's an easy thing to test collision on because it just kind of floats around and it, we can control where it goes. So if I pick the glove, right, like that, uh, I'm assuming that since it showed up there, it means that both those entities are understood, right, by the system. Um, I like that bug with the lighting. It, we've gone green, apparently. Nobody knows why. We just have. One of these days we got to finish the lighting, move it to the GPU or whatever we're going to do with it. Um Uh, but anyway, so, you know, first steps first, I'm just going to go in here and try to make this thing work so that I can pick somebody to diagram and then see the diagrams. And there's a pretty easy way to do that. Right now you can see we just have it hard-coded uh, that we see all these collision boxes, right? Uh, like around the glove, you can see them going. I don't know why this guy doesn't have any. He might actually have them. Yeah, so they're just behind him, right? You can see them there. So everybody's drawing those collision boxes. That's just like everything that is moving uh, is having those collision boxes uh, drawn. Uh, sorry, not everything's moving. Everything that's floating. Like these don't need them because they're just using the occupancy, like square occupancy. So they're not collision detecting uh, on a free motion. But anything like these guys who are free moving um, or the hero who is, uh, sorry, or the hero's glove that's free moving, all of those things are going through the collision detector uh, and so they have those little boxes drawn. So what I would suggest we do today to try and get started on this problem of having a good way to draw these uh, things. I love what I love the frame rate independence of that uh, or dependence of that. Right? Why you don't use proportional derivative controllers uh, in production code that are uncapped? Right? If you want to fix that quickly, you can just cap its velocity. But in general, you can try to make things that are more frame rate independent, but it's pretty great because it'll just do that forever, basically, uh, till the frame rate gets high enough, right? So anytime the frame rate is low, uh, you're going to get that, right? Anyway, um, so what we want to do is just figure out a way to make these, like just those diagrams uh, pop up through the diagram system. And, you know, we'll assume that this panel here allows us to pick. You know what I'm saying? That That's it. So we want something very simple like that. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to move those diagrams into the diagram system exclusively, 
right? So that's what the first thing we're going to do. So if we go to uh, wherever that was, like so, we can see in here that we set the filter to this entity. Uh, so that will work for us. Uh, and then I guess, uh, you know, I don't really remember where we were drawing this. I guess. So here's one of them. It looks like we do it in four places, right? Uh, so once inside the refinement, uh, once inside the best update, so once per iteration there, and then twice inside, uh, you know, the the move entity call on startup, basically, that I think just shows us, like, where you're uh, starting and going kind of a thing. Okay, so if we take a look at what goes on here, you can see that there's, like, some diagram stuff happening uh, in terms of control logic. Uh, you can see it here as well. And so uh, I don't know exactly how we want to do this, but we probably want something uh, like this maybe where we do a move entity, uh, you know, at the top of this. Um, we do a diagram begin, and then, like, somewhere over here, we do a diagram end. So that these are all enclosed. And then, you know, there's basically sub-diagrams. So here's the refinement step. Um, here's whatever the collision voxel step, right? These are just various things that we add. Uh, and now what we would do is just change those, those push volume calls, because they're all now enclosed, into basically a diagram box, right? So they're going to look like that. We wouldn't need this anymore, which is great, because we didn't really want that there, that we just did that so that we could have some drawing. Um, and you can see us passing the box there. Now, we wanted to set these up with colors, so uh, we want to do, like, that, right? Um, and we could make... A version of this that in fact we probably should as well uh, that just takes three parameters you know what I'm saying uh, so there's one that would be like because it's just a little bit easier to type and this is just supposed to be a, a simple system to use right so if we went ahead and just changed these into that uh, format Oops. I guess it was just that. If we went ahead and changed it into that format, um, I th think that's everything. Yeah. So we're just drawing two boxes there, and off we would go. When we come into this part of the system, um, there really isn't anything that's in this function. So all the drawing that was done in this part is done inside one of the functions that that part calls. Uh, and the same is true for the bottom here, like nothing. Yeah, so th that's really the only thing that this was drawing. So uh, again, this simplifies our code a bunch, which is what we kind of wanted to. Like if you look here, this kind of had to keep passing this render group around for no reason, uh, which, you know, is just makes the code uglier. Um, and harder to read. So it's nice to get rid of that because this way we have this sort of sideband that compiles out that does everything for you, which is the goal of debug code. Like you don't want people to architect around the debug code. You want it to just kind of happen automatically off to the side. Um, so same thing here. We can do a, oops, sorry, not debug, diagram box. So diagram box. And you can see here that the diagram color is set uh, based on this, like, colliding thing. Um, 
which we can do uh, exactly the same way uh, that we were doing it. And so that takes care of that one. Now we'll go to the diagram system instead of to the render group, which is what we wanted. And then finally, uh, there was one other one over here somewhere, wasn't there? Um, there it is. I'm like, I know we had another one because we looked at it. So if we take and we turn this one into a diagram box as well, uh, then that should be the end of it. Right. And now you can see here too why I kind of want to do the system this way. So you can see that this code is keeping track of a cell color, uh, which is again, just more architecting around debug, which we don't want. So that's kind of why I did the system this way, because it means instead of doing that, we can now do uh, this. You know? So basically we can just like push uh, the colors on there and they will be remembered. And so that way we can get rid of that variable, which again is us architecting. It's inserting code for the diagram thing rather than just calls to the diagram system uh, that, you know, so you don't have these extra variables lying around that are confusing about what they might be doing. Like, are they required for the actual operation or are they just there to draw the diagram? Now you can see that we've eliminated just a diagram specific calls, which is more what I wanted. So if we can compile this in theory, uh, we should be fine. Um, just get rid of some typos here, but it should produce a system that puts all this stuff uh, into the correct place for drawing later. Um, just get rid of all of the stuff that was passing that uh, move entity down. And I think uh, that's all good. We do have a sort of call here that we added for convenience, if we want to uh, do this the simplest possible way, we just make this effectively, you know, for all intents and purposes, a macro that really just calls this existing color thing with the bundle of the color. So it's it's really just typing. It doesn't do anything different. It's just changing the syntax that is allowed to be used on the outside of the code. So now if we run this... Um, and remove that breakpoint. Uh, we should have a situation where we no longer see any of those like debug diagrams. You can see that they're not here anymore. The glove used to like uh, you know show uh, these little squares moving around behind it, right? And it doesn't anymore. So that's exactly what we would have expected to have happen in this particular circumstance. Um, and so you know, yeah, exactly what we would expect is exactly what happened. So everything's good. And so now what we need to do is loft those out of there, so have a way of getting those diagrams onto the screen. And the first thing I guess we'll do is we can um, ignore the panel part for now, because that's like the picking thing, and you know we haven't looked at that code in a while, so we're going to have to page that in. Ignore that part, and we'll just cold set it. So what we'll do is we'll just like go into the part of the code where we start up the world or whatever um and we'll just like set it to the hero or set it to the glove of the hero or something um right in the code so you know we've got a uh an add player call uh it's gonna know which one is the hero because in here you can see it uh doing this add entity so what i can do is just force it in the middle of doing all of the, you know, initialization for a player joining the game, I can force it to set the filter to the glove's actual ID value, right? So that will mean that now the glove is, in theory, having all of its stuff recorded because the filter that we check, which happens in here, uh, the filter that we check will uh, be for the glove, which will re-enable its diagram collection. Now, if I run the code again, 
uh, again, purely in theory, nothing will actually happen because we're still not drawing these. What you can see, however, is this is this is unfortunate, and I guess I don't know. Um, this has caused us a lot of problems, and I don't know what we want to do about it. So because this system pushes on a lot of small allocations, what you can see here is we've, again, had this problem of the debug system that just records allocations so that we can draw them is not really capable of handling this very well. You can see it totally screwing up here again, right? Uh, and so I don't know what to do about that exactly. I mean, one way to do it is you can skip it with a flag, I suppose. Uh, but the other question here is like, is that just evidence that we've got uh, an issue happening here? Because you would think that it would clear this out uh, frequently enough that you wouldn't have this problem, right? Um, Ooh, just splashed myself in the face. Uh, so we're calling that diagram filter call, right? Um, in here, aren't we? Yeah. So we're calling that diagram filter call. And so in theory, you know, the first time through move entity that you encounter the glove, it should record all the things. And then the next time through, it should filter, right? That's what should happen. And, you know, I assume when we diagram end, uh, I guess I don't know, like, when this should get turned off. Because that's hard to say. Uh, but... It should only really have recorded the stuff that happens inside here, which shouldn't be that many things. I mean, it's a lot of things, but it's not that many. It's like 10,000 or something. Because remember, that we're not doing any spatial partition, so it's, really, it's literally going to record all of that stuff. So I guess one way that I can uh, test this is to just if zero this part out, so we're only drawing the things we were drawing before, and we're not going to draw all of this. And just see what happens. Um, because we know it couldn't have been that many because it was, you know, feeding it to the rendering system just fine. So without all that stuff happening inside the uh, shape collide, which is the n-squared part, so, you know, it should work. Um, okay. So, yeah, it looks like that's okay, I guess, um, at least for the moment. So we'll, we'll address that a little bit later. Anyway, so nothing happens, which is what we would expect because we're not actually drawing them, but we, because we hit that uh, assertion in the debug system, we now know that this is at least working, right? It did turn on and is collecting things because the debug system wouldn't have uh, had an overflow condition if we weren't dumping a ton of diagrams to it. So we know that it did turn on, which, it, you know, is what we wanted it to do, right? Um, and so I guess from, hmm, so I'm trying to think now. Uh, hold on, sorry. I want to reconnect something down here that just got unplugged. Uh, anyway, so what we would like to do is now start drawing those those diagrams to restore the same one that we had before. And, you know, the re render diagrams call, I don't know where we put it exactly. I don't remember. Um, but I imagine we would put it at the bottom of, of this uh, call, right, somewhere. You can see we, we put in diagram reset. I don't know that we ever actually put in render, though. Um, so that's a bit weird. It doesn't look like we did. So I'm assuming that if I did this, we would never actually hit it. Because I don't think we ever put in the call, it looks like. It doesn't look like we did. Right. So we put in the reset, but we never put in the render. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the render now. So in here, uh, we would have the render. The render commands part is what we would probably be passing, actually. Not a render group. Um, although the diagrams want to be in that render group. So, so actually, I guess that's not true. We would want to put this in some place that had the same render group as, like, the game, so that the 3D transform will be the same. Because the diagrams are drawn in that transform. You know what I'm saying? So we would want to go probably to world mode 
where you know this stuff is is all getting drawn and you know put it somewhere in here like you know where we're gonna do stuff like whatever we're gonna do so yeah uh, maybe there right before we do it uh, the the end of the right before we end we would render the diagrams there and so in here, what we then need to do is just write something that goes through all of the diagrams that exist and show them. So here's the diagram group. <clears throat> and in it, uh, we have a first and a last. So we can, in theory, just do a diagram entry entry equals group first. Uh, and off we go. So for each one of these, they are typed. It's a discriminated union. And you can see in here we have uh, all of these functions. And so we, we need to do a switch on what type of thing we have. And each one of these is going to be its own case. And we're kind of assuming that this code will not be particularly fast, right? We're just assuming this is just going to draw debug diagrams, and we're going to assume that we use filtering to ensure that we never do too much, right? So this is not supposed to be like a hardcore system. It's not supposed to be particularly performance-oriented. It's just supposed to be like flexible and easy for you to dump diagrams to in a way that you can see, right? So we'll lean on the filtering part uh, quite a bit. We'll try to make it so that filtering... Um, is the thing that really makes this work, uh, if that makes sense. And we can, you know, we can try to kind of go from there. We can add more stuff to the filtering part uh, as we go. So in here where we have diagram begin and end, at the moment we don't really need to do much for that, but we will because we're going to want to like reset colors and things like that uh, as we go in to like begins and ends. So we're probably gonna wanna keep like a stack uh, and we're probably gonna wanna have some opinion about how that works. For the moment, I'm not really gonna worry about that stuff. I'm just gonna have a color and a thickness. And I'm gonna assume that these are, you know, some sensible values when you start. And as you go through Every time you set something, it's just going to do exactly what you would expect. So, for example, in here, uh, we would have the diagram attributes, right? So this would be a trib.color. We would just pull that out into the sticky variable that we've got, right? Um, and in here, the same thing. Like, we've got the thickness and so on. Yeah. And... In fact, I guess so what we would kind of want to do here is actually have these default values be something that's set, right? So so these are probably actually going to look like this. Right? So we would do something like this. Right? Mm. Yeah. So we would set up a sticky uh, version, and then we set up a current version. In here, we would set the current ones, like so. Uh, and the text would probably be also part of that. So there would be, like, uh, that's never going to be sticky, so I guess that's just a buffer... Um, where we say, you know, what the current text was or something. And it would start with nothing. All right. Uh, so in here we would say, all right, the text equals the text that we're going to print. And then in stick we would just say, well, whatever the current uh, is, that becomes the new sticky one. And then here's our actual drawings, our various drawings. Uh, for the moment we can just do one because we know we're only really drawing the box right now. 
Uh, and so we'll just do the simplest possible thing, which is we'll draw the box, uh, and we'll do that using the parameters that we've got. Um, I don't know. Okay. Uh, so in here we would just pass the render group, which we need to get passed in, right? So that's something that's just like telling us uh, where we dump all of our actual graphics to. So we're going to push the volume outline out, and we're going to push it out through this rectangle here, right? And... Uh, You know, one interesting thing about this is it may be that we don't even really have to buffer these. I wonder if it ends up such that if we filter them properly, it, we can just have this be immediate and you never needed to buffer. Yeah, like, it... it hmm. Because if you think about it, it's like, the reason I was buffering is I was like, well, you know, you want to be able to, like, step through these things. I, I think I still want them recorded, and here's why. Because I don't yet have a solution to how I'm going to do the, like, okay, how do you capture one of these? We may need to implement something like a buffer lock. So, you know when something collides we capture that diagram and we lock that diagram in and we don't record any new diagrams right because we're going to need some way of capturing things that happen only like one time on this particular frame or whatever and then we want to look at those right and so just thinking it through i'm like we may just need to say look we're not going to we can't do this immediate mode because we need to be able to store the buffer. Um, or I should say pure immediate mode. The interface is immediate mode regardless, right? But we're we're going to store it and save it. Uh, we can't just do it pure because uh, we may need to just, like, remember this for many frames and draw it, you know, several times. Right? Ugh, I'm tired. So I do think it's probably not a waste of time to buffer them. I was thinking, like, you know, is it, is it not? Uh, but I think it might not be, right? I think it might not be. So I think we do, you know, I, I can't say for sure, but I think we do want the buffer there because the buffer is kind of important uh, for other reasons. Okay, um, what? Okay. All right, um... So I think that's fine. Since all of the renderer stuff is actually going to take a uh, V4, I do wonder if we want this to be uh, a V4. But we'll see. Uh, anyway, um, so now we can go ahead and run this and see if any of this stuff works. Uh, I'm not seeing any of those boxes at the moment. So I don't think it did, right? Uh, but I don't know. So we're going to have to like step through that code uh, and see what's going on here. I, I assume there's nothing stupid going on. Like, like you know, we're obviously doing append here. Uh, and the box min and max does go into 0 and 1. So, you know, it's what we would expect here. Um, so that, that all seems like what you would expect. Uh, yeah. 
And at the end of every single one of these drawing things, we probably want to do this as well. Um, so it resets each time. Uh, but I think that's basically it, right? Uh, and and then we need some stuff in here and, and you know, put in the text and points and lines and spheres and all that stuff, right? So we, we're going to have to add more stuff, but mm, seems about, about right. So let's find out why we're not seeing those or, you know, what's going on there. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to a debug build, and I'm just going to step through the diagramming uh, part of the code to see what it's doing and see if I can see what's the problem. You know what I mean? So looks like we don't have uh, that file open, so I'll just set a breakpoint. Uh, render diagrams uh, and let it take me there. So here we are uh, stepping through. Uh, it looks like the problem here is we didn't hit any of this, I guess. There we go. So we've started recording some now. Uh, and if I take a look at uh, this entry, we can see, you know, what the heck uh, we get in there. So here's an example of a box being drawn. Um, I mean, it looks fine. Uh, that's not a thing. I mean, that, that seems fine to me. Uh, we've got current color is like Pure green seems fine. Thickness is 0.1, seems fine. So here's us uh, actually drawing. And again, I mean, I don't see anything weird about those numbers. They they seem pretty good. That seems pretty good too. So I can't say offhand, pun intended, uh, that... I know why that wouldn't draw. Oh, and it is drawing. So is it possible that we have handmade internal turned off in release mode and that was the only bug? Was the build? No, it's turned on. Right? I mean, handmade internal, the flags are the same. Even slow is turned on. Right. So it's a bit weird. Um, I don't have an explanation for that. Did I, like, not compile the code? So it seems to be working just fine now. The only thing that's a little odd is the thickness looks wrong. So I'm guessing we actually were using 0. like 0. 0.01 for the thickness on those. So why didn't that work? What did I do wrong there? I'm not sure what I did, why that didn't work. That was weird. Um, but there's the diagram system in action, right? So all good, um, right? 
seems seems fine. Nothing uh, nothing too too unexpected there. And so now, really, I guess I just need to be able to pick this stuff better. Uh, and then we implement the other aspects of the diagramming, right? We need a way to uh, draw, you know, we need slightly better filtering because the, the giant, like, 10,000 dispatch thing uh, is probably not going to cut it. But uh, we could do some slightly better filtering, and then we can do... Um, drawing of things like the spheres and so on. Okay, so lines we already have. So it seems like that's something we should probably just do. I don't know what this stuff actually uh, refers to. Like CF, what is CF? It's just the color. What does the F stand for? From color function? From color face? Fade? I mean, I'm the only one who types in this code base, so I typed it in, but I have no idea what the F stands for. Um... Flat front. You got me. Uh, anyway, so if we do a push line segment here, we'll get lines, right? So that should be pretty straightforward. Uh, so if we want to draw lines, we can draw lines. And to do that, uh, I guess the texture part, maybe the texture part is a clue to why there's an F. I don't know. We don't care about the textures here, so we're not going to use that. Um, I don't know, man. So anyway, uh, the from is in the entry P, the two is in the entry P1, and then the colors, right? So, uh, in this case, the color doesn't, doesn't actually have, there's, there isn't one for either endpoint. So it's just going to be like, uh, current dot color. And again, you can see why I... I think I'm going to go ahead and just change that to a V4 uh, just to make it a little bit more sane. So what I'll probably do, here's my suggestion there, is this is not going to be a thing on the entities. We're just going to do like V3 color. Uh, maybe even V4 color uh, thick, right? Uh, and then we'll just you know change this around. Uh, and so now when we do this, uh, we'll extend it to the V4 in the actual call. So, you know, it, it should just work. And this will now get it directly out of here. And then these uh, just are larger now. And that way, we don't have to constantly mess with it. Uh, it's just, and and if someone does want to use alpha later, we can allow, we can have a call that would allow you to set the alpha, which we might want. And that way, all of this code just works because it's passing through the alpha now, which it might as well. There's really no reason not to. All right, I did that in the wrong order. Oops. So now I think we get line segments as well. Uh, I don't think anyone's drawing them, so I'm not sure that matters. I don't know that we have points. I think in general we just do uh, tiny like cubes for the points is what we've done in the past. So so I believe all we do here is we just do push cubes when we've wanted to draw those. And I, I think like we did that for example when we wanted to draw a. Um, like a lighting sphere. I don't know if you remember, but we, we kind of drew, like, yeah, it's this thing. Where the samples were, like, in a sphere. We just did it this way. 
And that to me seems like a good idea. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say that's how we're gonna draw points in here, uh, which is we just draw them as cubes of the size that you specified when you said what you wanted the thickness to be. That way you can also control uh, that thickness. So in here we would do a radius. Uh, the radius is gonna be, oops, uh, the current thickness three times over. Um, the placement of the point comes from P0. The color of the point comes from the color. And that's it for points. So we're down to just spheres and overlays. And we've got the text uh, part of this as well. So we want to do a, a drawing of text. And I, I don't really remember much about how we do text in this system, unfortunately. Um, you know, I, I just don't remember how any of that stuff works. Um... We're going to have to look. So if we take a look in the code that draws text, which is only really done for debugging um, and, like, editor panels and stuff like that, uh, you know, I have no idea how that stuff worked uh, or how we were doing it. But you can see here, like, Here's us doing some stuff with that, and it looks like text out at is the base call. God, like have a bigger stack. This looks like a Java program. Um. So it looks like this is our text call, right? Uh, we've never implemented one so far. Uh, I don't think that operates like in game. Uh, I mean, this is basically it. So you, you really just call uh, get bitmap for glyph, uh, bitmap info, and then you you do a um, an alignment of the text here, right? So it would be pretty easy to just redo this. Uh, I'm just not sure. I have to think about it. So I'm not sure what we want to do here. I really don't know. Um, I guess we just have to play around with it and see what makes sense. So I think we probably just want to make a little routine in the diagram system that's like takes the text and it puts it, you know, centered at a position, right? Uh, I mean, I, I don't really have a, much of an idea, you know. I just figured we probably want to be able to label things. 
I maybe I don't know. It's unclear whether we even really care about this, but we'll see. So I guess when it comes to spheres, these are the only things where we don't really have a way to draw them right now. There's a lot of ways I suppose we could draw them. We could draw them using the same kind of technique we did before where we just put points on the surface of the sphere. Uh, we could add the ability to draw an actual sphere, uh, which would you know be something that actually puts quads in a pattern around the surface of a sphere. I'm not sure we really want to go that far with it. So it's kind of hard to say what we want to draw here. Uh, we could put line segments around in like a ring that just sort of shows representationally where the sphere would be. Um, so that's another option that we could do. And so I don't know. Uh, it's Yeah, it's really pretty tough to say what should happen here, and I don't know. Uh, so anyway, moving forward with this slightly, um, let's go ahead and, and see if we can... Uh, the white texture thing. We have a easy way of getting just plain white texture here, right? Yeah. So I don't know if there's a, is there a like get white texture or plain? Yeah, I don't know. Um, so it's that. Uh, so we don't really have to care about that. But anyway, so I don't know what we want to do about text. I'm really not sure. Maybe we'll save that till next weekend when we can have some time to think about it. For right now, I just want to uh, go into the move entity stuff and see if we can now use some of this diagramming to get us some information, right? So let's let's see what we can do about that. So, and we'll see if we can maybe start to work on that panel, right? So in here, one of the things we know is that if we turn this on, we get problems. And the reason that we get problems is because this is called so many times. So one thing we could do is say, look, let's get this out of here. Uh, and just say like, all right, let's just show only when they collide. Um, so if they haven't collided, then we won't draw this at all, right? We won't, uh, and I guess really we probably want it the other way around, um, but yeah. So what we'd like to do here is is say if they haven't collided, uh, then we don't, right? Because that's what this is. It's like shapes collide. So it's true if they collide. If they haven't collided, we won't draw anything. If they have collided, then we will. Um, and, you know, we can see whether that gives us uh, some more of that information, right? So now when this thing collides like that, we should be drawing more stuff. Uh, and it's a little bit hard to tell because we're already drawing so much stuff with those, like, voxel occupancy things. that It's hard to tell if anything new got drawn in there. Now, the fact that there's some white squares in there suggests that maybe we do, because um, it's hard to say. But, I. Uh, in the interest of, of being clearer about it, let's just see what happens. Uh, maybe, maybe one thing we can do is start to put some of the filtering stuff into... Yeah, like we, we can start to put some of the filtering stuff into this system. So let me think about this for a second. This is my giant stretch. Um, So what I'd like to do here is I'd like to have a way, like I said before, I, what I'd really like to do is have some way of, of isolating these diagrams. And that's the part that I, I'm not really thinking, 
you know, it's weird as I did this in the witness and I actually can't remember how I did that system. Um, but it was a pretty good system. And I think what it might have done is capture many frames and then you just like step through to the frame you wanted. I think that may have been how it worked. Uh, so it just like it like saved, you know, diagrams over multiple frames, and then you could step back through. So you you know you'd do something like you know, that, or or well this right, well, okay, that. So you'd do something like that, and you'd just go like okay, you know, I'm gonna step through it now to see what happened. I guess one of the things one of the nice things about this particular situation is that's held in a static. Uh, configuration. So really, we can just, you know, that will just work in the sense that we can just actually see, you can see that we are drawing some stuff there, right? Those are lines, uh, I believe, that are being drawn, right? So we are definitely drawing. Uh, but yeah, like, we want to be able to now turn things on and off, right? We want to be able to say, like, oh, don't draw certain certain pieces or, you know, turn on and off different kinds of, of elements of this. I think the way I did that part in the witness was I just had flag, like I just had like an enum that was like any time you were doing a particular thing in a diagram, you just like said which one it was you were doing and then you could like turn them on and off just by clicking on, on like kind of like check boxes, right? Uh, and my assumption here is is like that would work just fine probably uh, I would suspect um, I mean I think that would probably just be fine so maybe we should do that. Like, we'll basically just have some enums, and we basically say, here's a bunch of enums that are, like, what parts of diagrams are being drawn, and you can just turn them on and off or something, right? Now, if I go and actually look at what's being drawn there, um, you can see putting in stuff like spheres or whatever. Um, none of this stuff is being drawn in any colors, so I also don't know which things are which. Uh, but you can see here that, that lines are actually only drawn in the sphere case anyway. So we do at least know that the sphere collision stuff is operating, right? It's just not working very well. Like, it's not actually doing anything um, that we would want it to, right? So... If we look right at what's happening there with the sphere, you know, the line is drawn from the center of the sphere. So in the case that we expect we have, which is this one, the line is drawn from the center of the sphere to the center of the box, right? Uh, no, sorry, to the closest point on the box, right? So that's like the center of the sphere is out here and the closest point on the box is over there. Um... And we have the problem where, for whatever reason, the, the sphere doesn't think it can move closer to that, right? What it's doing is it's evaluating to see whether it can get closer to there uh, from where it is, you know? And what's kind of weird about that is you would assume that it easily could just by moving out slightly and you know, because it is a sphere uh you would think that it could get closer to that by moving around you know around but it's not doing that and so i'm not sure yeah i'm not sure what the actual
I'm not sure what the actual best way is to look at that. So I guess what we can do as a game plan is we can just have a button. Because, like, okay, so f at least for this, we know we can get it into a situation. Like, that wasn't hard to do. We know we can get it into a situation where the glove gets, you know, caught on something so that it won't move from where it is, you know, until we ask it to do something different, right? And so my assumption there is that given that, we should be able to just have a thing on here where we just hit, like, you know, capture. And then it just remembers one of those diagrams and never clears it, right? Once we have it captured, then we can step through the different parts of it, right? And so, yeah, I mean, I think that's basically what we want. I don't know how much time I have left. Let me see. Um, 14 minutes, maybe. Let's say 14 minutes. So maybe what we'll do, so we'll do that next time. Maybe what we'll do this time is one of the problems we're going to have is we're going to want to be able to refer to these and step through them. And at the moment, they're just a linked list, which might be annoying for that. So one of the things we could do is just say, like, well, maybe they're enumerated or something or have IDs associated with them. I suppose if you capture... It's actually fine because you just store that pointer and like it matches something or it doesn't. You don't care, right? So that might actually be fine. I guess I don't know that that's true. Uh, but you can kind of see like where I'm going with this, right? So in the diagram system, uh, yeah, we would need a thing where like diagram reset doesn't get called. Uh, if you've done a capture. So probably what we would need is something like in the diagram group, we would have something like, you know, captured is like a flag that gets set. And so at some point you just do a thing that's like diagram capture. Uh, and capture like turns that to on. And... You know, it would need two things. It would need to to basically have a a, a state where you said like it's on or it's off. Um, so in here. Uh, we would set the captured state of the diagram group. Like that. Uh, and then what we do here is like diagram is on will always be off. Uh, so if you're not captured, then you can you can be on. Uh, and then we see whether filter pass is a separate thing, right? So that way when we capture, diagramming is off permanently, so no one's gonna do anything. Similarly, the call to reset will fail. So basically, like, if group captured, um, if, if you haven't done a capture, you can clear. If you have done a capture, you cannot clear, right? So once you lock in that capture, uh, it will not clear anymore. So what we could then do is inside that panel so in here where we had uh you know this this thing right uh what we could have here is like a lock like a like a, like a toggle 
I'm trying to think if it should be like two buttons or a toggle. Uh, I don't really know. But in here we could have a thing which which basically controls that, right? So there would be like a button thing, whatever the heck this stuff is, who knows, um, where we just say, all right, you've got a, you know, a button here. Um, and you push this capture button. And when you push the capture button, maybe we actually have like a, a toggle on this or something, right? Where we say like diagram uh, is captured. And we just say like, look, if it is captured, then it's like, um, or something like that. Uh, I don't know. And then in here we just say like, okay, maybe remember whether the thing is captured or not. And then in here we can set set it. So what did I call that again? And then that's just a toggle. So in here we've got two of these. We've got like is captured. And these both have to also kind of have their compiled out versions. So is captured will always be zero. And there's nothing you can do. Uh, and set capture will just not do anything at all. Uh, and that seems fine. So then on here, we would have the same thing. We have is captured. I don't know why these are not booleans. Too much ref term programming where we were just in C, I guess. And uh, never made one, but that ought to do it. Okay. So I think that's good. Everything seems fine there. And uh, so now, you know, this might actually also work just because, you know, you don't really need much for that to be working. So if I went in here and then I said, like, okay, like, capture that diagram. Um, I don't know why single stepping is, like, that color. but So it doesn't look like that worked for some reason, and I don't know what the reason actually is. Like, oh, I do know what that reason is. You can't change the camera. Uh, I mean, not the camera, but the basis. So you can't move out of the region. So it did work just fine. But if you moved out of the region, right, so it had a new center point, you'd still draw the diagram. It will just draw in a completely different place relative to the rest of the scene because the scene has slid. That's fine. Um, I don't care about that at all. We just won't do that, right? So there's our diagram frozen in place. Uh, so that's great because that was easy. I don't know what single stepping. Oh, so that turns on and off um, single stepping. Uh, so so that's actually, we actually already kind of had the button, I guess. Uh, so we don't really need this anymore because single stepping is not um, really a thing in the world world mode. Those don't probably want to be there, right? Uh, I'm, I'm just going to remove those because those are going to go into the diagram system now. So I, I don't actually want um, those to be there. Um, So what does that do? 
if anything. Soft bean. Oh yeah. What's going on, bean? What's going on, soft bean? What you doing? What are you doing? You just mousing around? You just mousing around? Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. There you go. Yeah. You want to say hi? Can you say hi to everybody? What are you doing? You wanna? What do you wanna do? You look like you're. Do you wanna be brushed? Are you in? A, do you need brushings? What's going on? Tell me what's up. It looks like you want brushings. You want brushings, right? Okay. Okay. You want brushings. You will get brushings for Sortan. It is important to maintain optimal coat health at all times and brushings is an important part of this as we know as we know as we all know there you go Okay. All right. Looking good. Looking sleek. Looking sleek. Wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe this is actually good. I don't know. Uh, maybe I should leave it in. I didn't realize we'd actually done it, um, to be honest. I, I thought that was just kind of some placeholder stuff, but it looks like we actually put that in there. Um, and if that's the case, I guess I won't take it out. So, so can we use this? Is this still a thing that we want? What are you doing, puss? What are you doing? Um, like, if I do uh, single stepping here, um, okay, so it kind of does, interesting. Um, so, yeah, I guess, you know what, I'll leave that in there, because, you know, we, we might maybe don't need the capture stuff as much if we have that, because we can kind of step it. Uh, maybe we'll have to cap the m movement amount like I'm that didn't seem like a single step to me um I'm not sure what are you doing what are you doing booba what are you doing what are you doing uh so yeah I don't really know what we're gonna do with that um but I like it, so I'm not going to remove it. I don't know why that step was able to move quite so far. That's a bit odd. Uh, so maybe I'll take a look at that. It could be that we're not, like, clamping the total movement amount at all. Uh, there. Which we probably should. What are you doing, Booba? What are you doing? You just chilling? I gotta finish up the show, okay? We're almost done. Okay? Okay? Okay. Alright. Okay. Come on. You go sit down for a little bit. Um... So, yeah, like, I don't know. That might just be because we're not clamping those uh, velocities at all, right? Um, but, like, if you look here, 
In fact, you can kind of see that it's allowed to just do like arbitrary stuff here, which is kind of nuts. Uh, so we must not be clamping the total distance or something. So maybe that's what we do next time. Let's look at that. And I didn't know we had already implemented this. This is great. So we may not really need capture much. We may be able to just like get away without really ever using it. It's nice to have it there in case we do because it was, you know, free to add. It took like, you know, two seconds to put that in. But now that we have the diagrams and the single stepping, that actually seems pretty good because then I can just like step through and watch each one happen. So maybe we just put a little diagram filtering in there next time and then hopefully, you know, we'd be okay um, to, to debug uh, what's happening with, with some of that stuff. So, all right, let's go ahead and do Q&A.